So guess who's about to go back on his word of not doing half-hour opinion pieces? You youngins with the shorter attention spans may want to divert your eyes and ears now. A uh, bit of a foreword, I promise I'm still working on my more heavily edited content. Expect more of that in the future. I just like to fill out the time and space uh, between those more intensive projects with little unedited clips here and there. Usually, you know, about me talking about things like the battalion's backup or skins or funny moments when I'm playing the game uh, with my friends. So if you like this, great. If not, well, then don't watch it. Fuck my neighbor's dog. It keeps barking. Um, so here you go. Uh, fun fact, I am actually a woman. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, hate to disappoint, I'm not, so. Hello, for those of you who have not seen my face before, this is what I look like. Uh, but that's not the main point of me even streaming, just because my face is not important. So, good evening. <laughs> I am indeed a man. Surprise, surprise. Okay, I'm still, I'm still pretty on the inside. <laughs> so, you know what? Let's, uh, let's dive right into this, because the main reason why I wanted to stream tonight is because um, my video concerning skins was recently shared, and it's kind of been moving around, and um, it's gaining a little bit more attention than I had kind of ever thought it would, and also my channel in general is kind of dealing with that right now. And my newer videos are fairly well structured. I mean, you know, up until this point, you know, the past few videos that are involving discussions about TF2 items, you know, I'm able to actually kind of construct my arguments, evidence, back it up with my thoughts, etc., etc. But my older, uh, my older videos that kind of address certain topics like duped items and TF2 skins are a little more on the fly. So for instance, when I recorded my uh, rant about skins do not suck, uh, that was just me sitting in front of the mic one full go. I just went, I just went, I just talked nonstop the entire time. And I didn't really back up the points I made in the video and kind of made these half-assed snide comments and jokes kind of not really giving my support for the comments that I was making. So what I want to do today is I kind of want to go back through what I said in the video and I want to kind of support the points that I actually made and then kind of um, go into a few other things. So there's three main things I want to do. I want to go back through my video saying that skins are not inherently bad for Team Fortress 2. That's a big deal. Skins are not bad for the game and I'm going to support that opinion here in a minute. Second, uh, skins are overall good for the game and do not suck. That's a more of a subjective viewpoint and kind of another one of the arguments that I made in my video. I'll dive into that after I go through my first main point. And then the last thing I'm going to do and to kind of lighten things up a little bit is uh, I'm going to uh, address some of the common concerns and a few of the comments that have, were uh, put on my video about TF2 skins and um, why I think they're fairly good. So, the first main point that I would like to cover. Get German Peter in here. Uh, the man's probably asleep. Um, he's uh, in a different time zone. He's probably fast asleep right now. Game theory debunked. Ew, anime profile picture. Ooh, sorry. Uh, so, the first main point that I would like to make in favor of Team Fortress 2 skins is the fact that they are not inherently bad for the game. And the first thing that I want people to remember before I get into the details of this, is that Valve is a company. It's a business. And Team Fortress 2 is their product that they sell to us on a daily basis. They sell us this product. And we spend money on it. And generally, companies want to earn money. And for video game companies with very long-lived IPs, like Valve's Team Fortress 2, and uh, whoever the fuck, De who, like Blizzard and... Um, all of their titles that are still chugging along today, uh, they need to keep adding content that people want to buy in order to keep these games going. And especially for games that are free to play, like Team Fortress 2 and Fortnite, they have to put things in the game that people want to buy so they can actually make their product profitable. Otherwise, what's the point in even having it? So, Valve added skins into the game to make money. Plain and simple. That was like the main point in the video that I made, is that Valve put skins into Team Fortress 2 to make money off of us. That's There's nothing else to it. 
This does not mean that Valve is some money-hungry machine that doesn't listen to its customers. Valve is known for making very high-quality games and products, and, you know, they oftentimes listen to customer feedback, even though they don't necessarily relay that they're actually listening to us. Their lack of communication is something that they are very notorious for. So, more or less kind of like the main thing is they added skins into the game to earn money. So, when skins were actually added to the game, TF2 was pushing, it was seven years old, right? So it's, you know, it's been around for a long time. It had been free to play for, I think, three years at the time. 2014 is when Gunmetal came out, 2015, if I'm, I'm probably incorrect at that point. But it had been free to play for a while. And people are spending money on hats, on keys, Man vs. Machine had come out not too long afterwards. Things of that nature. Lack of communication, communism is just random crits in real life. <laughs> Skins are good shit, I, I completely agree. And I like some of the Halloween ones, I, and at the very end, if people are interested, I'm, I'm more than happy to go through... Um, uh, ooh, hello. Some of my uh, personal favorites. I can, I can make my face a little bigger. It's, it's not necessary, but since it's just kind of me talking for a little bit, then you may as well have my face a little bit bigger. Anyway... So, when skins were first added to the game, TF2 is around seven years old, and item sales are the main thing that keeps Team Fortress 2 profitable for Valve. And TF2 is not the new Fortnite, I'm just comparing the fact that they're both free-to-play games, and they have their, you know, their economic because people buy cosmetic items primarily in the game. That's the main thing. So, um, given that Team Fortress 2 has been, you know, one of Valve's most profitable IPs for over a decade now, at the time, they wanted to kind of, you know, keep milking that cow, so they put skins in the game for us to buy. And the way that worked is we had our contract campaign passes, we bought into those contracts because we wanted those skins. That is what we wanted in Team Fortress 2. We spent money on the campaign passes for the contracts, which were fucking amazing, totally fun. And we were rewarded with skins or a, or a case to which we could then spend more money on to get a skin. And we spent money on it. And I think I'm fair in saying that a vast majority of the people that participated in this had a lot of fun. And they very much thoroughly enjoyed it. It earned Valve a lot of money. And so they kept doing it. They had Gunmetal. They had Tough Break. They had the Pyroland... Or not the Pyroland update. They had the... Um, Jungle Inferno update, which where they added war paints. Then they had two more war paint cases afterwards. They kept putting these things into the game because they know, based off of previous information, that we're going to spend money on them. That's why skins are added. They earn Valve money, and they're inherently good because Team Fortress 2 is a free-to-play game. It's only going to remain under dev support so long as it remains economic for Valve, and it earns them money. We keep spending money on the game, more money for Valve, slightly slower rate of death for Team Fortress 2. That is a f given fact. I'll repeat that again. That is a given fact that we're spending money on this game is the sole reason why it still has dev support. Yes, the developers are still very passionate about Team Fortress 2. They, pour, they pour their heart and soul into this game, thank them, bless them for even bothering with Team Fortress 2 at this point. It's over 10 years old. It's a hot mess to even touch, I'm sure. And they're, you know, they're working on it on a daily basis, this small dev team. Uh, my personal thanks to you for chugging along in this game and keeping it alive, the one that I love so much. But it wouldn't, you know, keep receiving the support unless it was profitable and economic. And that's why skins are in the game. In long story short, it's a cash grab for Valve. Plain and simple. That's the objective point of my argument as to why skins are good for the game. Gives Valve money, TF2 is still profitable, makes the game last longer because Valve sees it as something that's going to earn them money. Slightly slower rate of death for Team Fortress 2. And that's basically it. It's all the same thing. It's the same thing as Killstreak Kits, Man vs. Machine, Australians, all hats, unusuals, all cases, all crates. Everything that we spend money on in this game keeps it alive longer. That's basically it. For the most part. That's the objective portion as to why skins and everything else that we spend money on 
is very much good for Team Fortress 2. It keeps it alive. Earns, it earns them money. They see their product as profitable. And that's it. That was my main point. And however irate I may have sounded in my video, it's the exact same point I'm making now. So, fair? Fair? Yes? I would say so. Hell yeah, stream's over. Yep, that's it. That's the main point that I wanted to make. Uh, uh, so yeah. We spend money on TF2. It keeps it alive. Skins are good because we spend money on them. So now, let's get into the more subjective arguments as to why people don't like skins in Team Fortress 2. And I think one of the more common arguments and the one that I kind of forgot to put down on my list of notes here that I have off to the side is that, um, oh my god, it just completely escaped me. It'll, it'll, it'll come back to me. It's probably not that important if it was going to mention it. Oh, right. It's because they were just copying CSGO and putting skins into, ooh, pardon me, into, CS, into TF2 because it worked in CSGO. Duh. <laughs> Where else do you think they got this idea from? It's because it worked in fucking CSGO. No shit they're going to put it in Team Fortress 2 if they think it's going to earn them money. It's like, wow, what a foreign concept. And for some peop reason, people are like angry about that. It makes no sense to me. Of course they're going to do it. It's not a unique idea. However, they evolved it a little bit to put it in the Team Fortress 2 to where it works for the game. And they did that by changing how skins work in Team Fortress 2, at least with war paints. The first two waves of skins in Gunmetal and in Tough Break were fixed weapons collections that were identical to CSGO's skin system. However, they were designed to fit into the game, and I'll get more into the design here in a bit, and, you know, the arguments that people have for and against that, but... No shit they came from CSGO. And people were, I remember like when Gunmetal first came out, it's like, oh, it's TF GO, TF GO. And I'm like, this is cool. I want weapon skins because you have an unusual on your head that you can't see when you're playing the game, unless you taunt, of course. You know, you have this skinned weapon in your hands. You can look at it. It's right there on your screen. I made that argument in another video of mine and why I personally like using skins. It's a character customization that I can see directly on my screen for TF2. It's awesome. Anyway, before I go too far off on a tangent, let me keep going in my, in my structure here. So, show all of your skins. Uh, if so inclined, I will do so later on. And yeah, CSGO is the inspiration for Team Fortress 2 skins. That's basically it. Plain and simple. So, the last point that I kind of wanted to make, and this isn't, this isn't subjective, it's just kind of a case-by-case -case basis, and this is a given fact, and it's definitely a drawback for skins being in Team Fortress 2 is that they directly impact game performance. This is the first point that I want to address, is skins impact the game's performance. Every skin has a unique texture that has to be loaded by your computer's central processing and your CPU. That's where most of the work is being done on your computer when you're running Team Fortress 2. And putting more shit for the game to render is going to make the game chug harder and have a harder time making the game look the way it's supposed to. As a result, you're going to get performance issues. You're going to get frame drops. You're going to get stuttering. And it all depends on the system that you yourself have. Team Fortress 2 is notorious for being one of the most poorly optimized games right now, even though it is so insanely fun to play. And it's only playable on you know lower-end computers if you're running some sort of graphics config because default settings can only do so much, right? So that's an issue with, you know, skins impacting game performance. And but the beautiful thing about that is if they are indeed impacting your game performance, you can shut them off. That's one of the glorious things about TF2's customization is that it goes beyond the cosmetic and that go actually goes into the graphics for TF2. You can shut off skins by going to DX8 or lower or adjusting whatever you want to see in your game using a custom config and then your game will run better. Your game is gonna run like shit if you're playing it on a 10 year old toaster, but that's my main point here. So they do impact game performance. That is a common point that is made by a few other people that I've talked to and a couple of other YouTube videos that I've stumbled upon. Not the most popular ones that kind of bash skins, but that is certainly something that is going on. So here is the first major point that is mentioned by a few people. I'm not going to name people directly until later on. And it's that a lot of Team Fortress 2 skins are ugly. Textures are repetitive. 
And they're also, you know, not desirable to the eye if they're anything other than in factory new condition. My opinion on this is that beauty is in the eye of the beholder sums up this entire thing. It is a purely subjective opinion that one skin is more aesthetically pleasing over another. Personally, I like battle scarred skins. I like I like factory new, but I also like battle scarred and some, you know, field tested and well worn variants look very good. For instance, I have a factory new minigun. This looks kick ass. It's very clean. The textures look nice. It's great. But I also have a battle scarred dragon slayer minigun. This thing looks fucking gnarly. It looks like a beat up giant gold dragon. It looks fucking cool, but that's battle scarred. So it can't be aesthetically pleasing, right? Because it looks like hot shit, right? Uh, okay, here is a minimal wear pizza polished whip. In my eyes, that looks fucking factory new. The case by case, it varies, all subjective as to what looks good and what does not. So using that as a basis for saying that Team Fortress 2 skins are bad or they suck, in general, across the whole board, is inappropriate because that's your individual opinion. And by what I've seen, and by what I'm seeing in my chat right now, is that most people like skins. They want to use them. They find them pleasing, they're fun to use, regardless of what, you know, the wear or whatever, because they're gonna pick what they like to look at. There's a huge variety. And sure, some skins are garbage, but that's just in my eyes. So you can't use the argument that a lot of skins are ugly when someone else might find an ugly skin pleasing and then a pretty skin ugly. Right? So. The Battle Scar Dragon's Fury on the minigun looks like the minigun got singed in the fire. Yeah, it looks like it got scorched by like a dragon. There's art you can make arguments for, you know, various wares of things, right? So for instance, another one that looks really fucking cool in um Da, 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 in anything other than factory new is boneyard so the boneyard variants uh actually have a nifty little gimmick with them Ooh, wrong one uh where if you increase the wear on them especially noticeable on the sniper rifle you actually start to see bone marrow inside of the part of the weapon that is skinned as bone so here's factory new and then if you go to field tested oh there's some blood that looks cool. It looks like a rotting corpse. Battle scarred. It's a. It looks fucking cool. It's like you have this bloody bone marrow oozing gun. It looks really cool. But that's battle scarred, and clearly it only looks good in factory new condition, right? See, to me, I think battle scarred or field tested look way better on this one. So that's another case. Another example would be coffin nail. So coffin nail is made to look like a cigar, or cigarette rather, not a cigar, a cigarette. So, for instance, again, probably more mostly noticeable on uh, sniper rifle is that if you look here, the barrel is singed as if though it is being smoked like a cigarette. You see the embers on the end, and that's in something that's other than factory new. So, I have a pending alert. Oh, someone someone just blew a hundred dollars. Well. Hey, money spent on the game, right? <laughs> uh, who am I to judge when I'm giving the exact same point of you should spend money on this game in order to keep it alive? Because that is what's keeping it alive. <laughs> so there you go. So yeah, not all skins look better when they're factory new. There's a lot that look pretty good when they're field tested battle scarred and beauty is all in the eye of the beholder. That's basically it. And so here's another thing. Some skins are ugly or rather, they're commonly taken as ugly because you have to, ha and this is how it worked in CSGO too, is that you have to have lower grade skins to kind of, or rather, lower quality skins to kind of flesh out the lower grades. Why? I have to be pinged right now. I need to shut those off. So for instance, if you have a collection like the Gentleman's Collection, you go all the way from civilian up to commando. You need kind of less aesthetically appealing skins to fill out the lower grades and this isn't an excuse to put in inherently shitty skins but that's why they're there you know it's not because they purposefully put in these skins because it's a lazy design to me this civilian grade looks cool it looks like a tailored suit that's the idea it look you know it's not this bright eye candy gun 
but it looks nice. It's very sleek. It's very simple. You know, there's other ones like this too. Okay, for okay, so for me, the fucking antique annihilator looks like baby vomit. But someone else might find this pleasing, right? Someone else might like this one. It's a lower grade. I don't consider its texture lazy or repetitive because they need to flesh out lower ones, right? That's the main thing. Citizen Pain is civilian grade. This is a unique skin. That's team colored, two different textures. This is a prime example of a lower grade civilian grade that looks amazing. Right? This is a good looking skin and this is civilian grade. You can get it for 15 cents on the community market right now. So, again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Someone else may might find something that a lot of people consider ugly as pleasing and vice versa. So, that's the idea. And so this was an issue kind of pre-war paint era. But when war paints were introduced, you could kind of pick and choose what weapon your skin should go on and kind of pick, okay, which weapon does this skin look the best on? You had more variety that was introduced. Backcountry Blaster is civilian that looks great, Clock. Yeah, Backcountry Blaster is another one that looks pretty freaking good. Dress to Kill looks like an Australian, but less intimidating. You're exactly right. Um, there was another one. It's mercenary grade. The Blitzkrieg, uh, Blitzkrieg Knife. Where are you? I have it buried here somewhere. Is this it? Yeah. So, uh, totally real Australian knife because it's a discount Australian. And I mean, it doesn't look bad. It's a good looking skin. You know? And beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I'm going to say it a hundred times over and over again. It's, it's the main point of me rambling on, on this particular point. Just because one person finds them ugly doesn't mean they're all ugly. To, and it's, it's ugly for everybody and that they're inherently bad for the game. You cannot use beauty as an argument for why skins suck, you know, because everyone's going to have different tastes. So there's that. Uh, okay, next point that I'd like to cover, and this is a huge point that people like to jump on with skins in Team Fortress 2, is that skins deviate from Team Fortress 2's 1960s art style and the overall aesthetic. And there's two parts to this. So, this is true. That some skins do deviate from the fact that Team Fortress 2 takes place during the 1960s. Some do deviate from this. For instance, uh, Miami Element. This clearly does not belong in the 1960s. This is based off of the 80s retro you know, type of art style as we were slowly entering the digital age. This does not belong in Team Fortress 2. I humbly agree. I totally agree. Another example of something that does not belong in Team Fortress 2 is the Jazzy War Paint. This particular design was actually made in 1991. That's when this blue and purple squiggle was first made by an art student. I forget where, I think it's like California or something. This is when this design was made. And it does not belong technically in Team Fortress 2 because it was made in 1991. And the game takes place we assume in the 60s, sometime after World War II, and also before Vietnam, somewhere in between there, likely the 60s. This one also doesn't belong in there, but that's basically it. It looks cool, and I'll get to that in a minute. It looks cool, and there's one more skin that should not be in Team Fortress 2 for going off the argument that things from the 1960s, or sorry, after the 1960s do not belong, and it is the Sand Cannon. The Sand Cannon is a yellow and tan version of the digital camo pattern which first became army issue in Canada at around 2001-2002. So if we're going solely based off of a time era argument, this skin technically does not belong. Dragon Slayer, so you have the argument for the Dragon Slayer, no. So this type of design, like this art style of like a dragon's head and the color scheme, this is something that is seen in Chinese artwork for literally millennia. BC and forward. So saying this doesn't belong solely based off of the time, age, and era, that one doesn't work. But the second part to this argument is that a lot of skins deviate from Team Fortress 2's overall aesthetic, and that is true. There are a lot of skins that do deviate from the otherwise washed out primary and earthy tones that Team Fortress 2 is known for in terms of its color schemes. And some of the worst offenders of this are things like Miami Elements and Jazzy, Dragon Slayer. These are very gaudy, bright, noticeable guns. 
other things like I mean this is still a pretty washed out pink but you know if you want some stronger offenders things like bonk varnished is you know incredibly bright this is like major eye candy this really stands out against say something like a warhawk flamethrower where a lot of the colors match something that you're gonna see on a map or colors you already have on your stock weaponry you know, things like the Rainbow Grenade Launcher. Mostly higher grade weapons tend to have this quality. But, this does not mean that they are inherently bad for Team Fortress 2, or that they detract from the game in any way. They don't hurt the game, it's all subjective as to what is and is not something that is pleasing to the eye. And sure, some skins do deviate sharply from the art style, but you can't use that as the sole argument for skins, because guess what? About half the hats in the game do the exact same thing. And so do unusuals. These things are these incredibly grabby, bright things that our eyes want to fix themselves on, because guess what? We want to spend money on them, and it goes back to the argument of Valve making products for us to spend money on. And this is a point I made in my video. If they didn't look bright and colorful, why in the hell would Valve make them in the first place? We would not spend money on some black and white, gray, washed out skin unless someone else, you know, unless someone happened to find that pleasing to the eye. But someone is more than likely going to buy something. Where's my... My pink elephant is missing. I could have sworn I owned one. Heresy. Oh no, I lied. My pink elephant is back here. So, for instance, someone is more than likely going to want to buy something that looks like this. Bright, pink, noticeable. It's really pretty. I want to spend money on that right now. In comparison to, say, something that looks like, I don't know, what's a really plain looking skin. Um, okay, so let's say Backcountry Blaster, right? So, Backcountry Blaster, or the Antique Annihilator. This is fairly plain, fairly washed out. As a result, you're not going to want to spend money on it. So, of course, they're going to make things that are bright and colorful, because we're going to want to spend money on them. This argument is fairly shallow, sure, but most skins are not that invasive to players' eyes. You know, people like to look at them, hence why people buy them, hence why a lot of people buy them. So, and a grand majority of the skins, their design, an argument could be made that they actually fit in the 1960s era that Team Fortress 2 takes place in. Fair? I think that's fair. An argument can be made for all of them except three. Sand Cannon, Jazzy, and Miami Element. The rest more than likely can have an argument that says that they fit inside of Team Fortress 2's decade of occurrence. More or less, I would say. So, there's that argument for wrapping up skins deviate from TF2's 1960s art style and overall aesthetic. Here's another point that some people have brought up, and that is skins confuse new players. I'm gonna say rarely does someone ever mistake a sticky jumper for a skinned sticky bomb launcher. That was something that was something that someone brought up as an argument or that someone is going to mistake a well so this is the argument that I kind of made. The only one of the few examples that I could see as someone kind of having an issue with is mistaking something like the reserve shooter for the shotgun because the skin variants on those for instance if we take a look at something like Ghost Town and we go to uh, so take a look at the reserve shooter first. This is what the reserve shooter likes with Ghost. That nah, can't talk. This is what the reserve shooter looks like with Ghost Town, right? But then if you go to the shotgun, shotgun. At first glance, it might be a little tricky to tell the two apart, and I humbly agree with that. But for the most part, a lot of people don't come across this issue, and if they do, and this is an argument that I made in my video. At maximum, it'll take getting killed by this once before they realize, oh, this player is actually playing with this, and I need to change my approach to fighting them accordingly. People don't just throw their fucking hands in the air and say, well, I guess that's it. He's using a sticky bomb launcher, not a sticky jumper. I guess I'm leaving this server. My fun is ruined. It's a mere moment in time, and they can adjust their play, their play style accordingly once they figure out what they're actually using. Most of the time... It doesn't even take that much. 
For instance, if you have this reserve shooter shotgun thing, you need to one, hear what the gun sounds like. They sound different now. Two, you need to see, you know, and this is like the main thing. This is actually the main thing, is that color in Team Fortress 2 is not the key identifying feature for all of the, you know, mercenaries and weapons that we know and love. It's their shape. It's their identifying outline. We know that the heavy is the heavy because of his shape. We know the soldier is the soldier because of his shape. We know the direct hit is the direct hit because of its shape. We know the rocket launcher is the rocket launcher because of how it looks. We know the shotgun is the shotgun because of how it looks. All of the weapons have a unique weapon model that differentiates them from every other weapon that may perform or look slightly similar to them. That is the key identifying feature with weapons and mercenaries in Team Fortress 2. It is their shape, it is how they look on their player model and not their color. If the game was designed solely around how something looks with color, how do you think colorblind people would be able to play in this game? Of which a lot of people I know, and other people I'm sure, are colorblind and play this game. Exactly, what about the colorblind people? If the game was designed around color, then they're gonna have a serious problem. So for instance, if people are like, you know, red-blue colorblind, it's more rare than, 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 uh, than green, um, you know, if you have, let's say, a, uh, a Neo Tokyo, Neo Tokyo, say you have a Neo Tokyo shotgun, and say you have a Neo Tokyo reserve shooter, they look fairly similar, right? A colorblind person would only see black and white, but they know the reserve shooter is the reserve shooter and the shotgun is the shotgun because of how they're shaped. Their player models are very different. So you can't rely solely on the fact that the weapons are colored similarly to others that it's going to confuse new players because this is just a farce. Because they're going to learn very quickly if they are actually confused that this weapon is actually this, either based on the shape, either by dying into dying to this person once. That's the main thing. So that's my stance on that argument. The key thing is that we're able to tell what's what in TF2 because of their shape, not their color. Fair? I think so. And this is explained by someone else who compared, I, I don't recall the video, where a very, a very well-structured argument of someone comparing Team Fortress 2 to Overwatch. And one of his main arguments is Team Fortress 2 is so well designed because we're able to readily recognize who's who because of the shapes of the player models and the shapes of the weapons and how they sound and how they look. Everything is so well designed and maintained in terms of its, its aesthetic aside from color that we're able to really quickly tell, oh, that's a heavy, oh, that's an engineer, oh, that's a scout, you know? Just because they're similar size, they look very different, we can tell what from what. So saying color is confusing is invalid, farce. I don't buy into that for a second. So, couple more points here, and this is, I forgot I put this one on here. So this is the last point that probably made me the most upset, and the reason why I made my skins are do not suck video. This is my main thing. It's that skins are hard to sell and trade. Fuck you. Fuck you if you make this argument. Plain and simple. Skins weren't put in the game for you to make money off of. Nor were any other items that were put into this game for you to trade. This game is free to play. It's a video game. They put things in this game for us to buy so we can keep it alive. Not for you to flip and make profit on. Though that's what people do. That's something that our community has done and has built a major nugget on. That is the trading community. A lot of people make a lot of money off of Team Fortress 2 because they're able to buy and sell items for profit. A lot of people do that. But saying that a specific item in the game is inherently bad for the game's health because you can't flip it for profit or you can't sell it for money is really fucking shitty. That's just bad. You can't base a value in something and if it's impactful for the game if you can't make money on it. That really makes me mad. So. Say they put in a new weapon for the game. Say they gave the demo man a grenade launcher that shoots a fucking nuke. I don't know. You say you can't sell this for money? Well, I guess it's inherently bad for the game overall and they shouldn't exist. 
that makes no sense to me. And that's it. Just because a new addition to the game doesn't readily facilitate for every corner of the community to be 100% happy and functioning in this game does not mean it is negatively you know, affecting the game. It does not detract from the game's quality overall. Again, because the majority of people like skins and they use them. Just because you can't sell them for money doesn't mean they're bad. So shut your fucking mouth if you use that argument. I hate that. I really hate that. Like, I just don't... It's like, I, I hate that. I hate that a lot. Anyway, so uh, I, can, I can rant about that all day, but I'm going to cut myself off there. So from here on out, uh, that was like the main, those were like the main subjective points that I made in my video that I just wanted to give a little more support for. So now I kind of want to go into some of the comments that were being left on my video because it got shared recently and with my recent growth, quote unquote, people kind of caught eye of this video that I made and are like, oh wow, I want to comment on this and you know, give my feedback. So I want to kind of address uh, a few things that someone made. So now here I'll start, you know, calling out people directly. So German Peter, you you know him, you'll love him. He's a YouTuber. Left a comment on my video because one of his, you know, a popular skins video, one that negatively disses skins, um, is one of the most viewed about Team Fortress 2 skins. In fact, a majority of the videos about TF2 skins are the ones that dog them and don't actually praise them, unlike myself. But that I'm not, you know, stroking my own ego here. That's just a fact. Uh, so, he commented on my video with kind of a list of things, and, uh, and yes, he had the point that my video is not great, it's not great, you know, you, 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 German Peter, if you're, if you're, you know, paying attention to this, that video was really bad, you know, it, it was overall bad, not overall good, it actually very few redeeming qualities about it whatsoever, so thank you for your, for delivering that blow softly, because <laughs> it was really bad, but this is why I'm doing this now, to kind of like address and support the arguments that I made and the, some of the things that you brought up that I hope that I can clarify. So that's why I want to kind of go through that list that you left on that video. So first things first, most skins are lazily designed. A lot of them aren't. A lot of skins are not lazily designed. This goes back to how lower tier skins are needed to kind of fill out the lower grades, but this does not mean that they are lazily designed, nor are they bad for players in the game. People also like these lower grade lazily designed skins as well. Again, going back to Backcountry Blaster and, you know, Antique Annihilator, Iron Wood, things like that. So, my bedroom looks weird. Well, I'm sorry to say my bedroom looks weird. No skin in this game is lazily designed. Yes, they did pull some textures and put them on the weapons. But work still went into doing that. You know, it wasn't like lickety split, bing, bang, boom, here it is. They actually had to put some time and effort into mapping these textures to these weapon models. And then delivering them as products for us. That does not mean that skins suck or are inherently bad. It's just how they approached some, not all. They really only had this offense uh, with the first two contract completion collections. The two Fort and Craftsman collections were the most notorious offenders under this rule. Uh, but everything else that came after pretty much had unique weapon, weapon skins. You know, again, you had things like Coffin Nail or Dress to Kill or Autumn or Nutcracker that were applied to multiple weapons and I think that's why they opted to move towards a war paint system instead is because they kind of realized that oh we can apply these same textures to multiple weapons and they still look pretty good for the most part so I think that's why they kind of opted to do war paints instead and it kind of left it up to us okay this is what I want this texture to be on so saying that they're lazily designed very much debatable but I can see where you're coming from. But very debatable. Uh, bedroom is weird because there aren't any anime posters up yet. Um, well, this tiny camera is not... I don't know if you see that. But that's there. But everything that's related to that is in front of me. Where I can see it, not behind me. Anyway, um, so next point that he makes is that there is an oversaturation of skins in the game and on the workshop. No. There isn't. The number of skins put in the game compared to other games like Counter-Strike is very small. Sure, the volume of skinned weapons in the game is fairly high. 
but the number of individual unique textures is very small compared to like Counter-Strike Global Offensive, of which there are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different weapons textures. In TF2, there's not that many in terms of weapon, like unique weapon textures at all. So there isn't an oversaturation of them in game. I don't know why you'd make that argument. Uh, there's an oversaturation of skins on the workshop. I don't see this as a bad thing, and maybe this is why you were saying this too, is that there's too many skins on the workshop that aren't being put in the game, which I think is bad too, because there are a lot of really good skins on the workshop that look amazing, that I want to see in game. Like, I want more. I want more of these great, you know, amazingly designed things put in the game because they look kick ass, you know? There's a war paint in there right now that uses the same color scheme as the health packs. I, 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 I praise the guy who made it. I praise him for every skin he makes. He's made so many good ones. But that, that, that health pack weapon skin, I want that in the game. There was another one. That there's one that's like it looks like a like a like like a like molten I think is like molten is what this war paint is called it looks like a hot rock like magma it looks fucking cool there's another one that's like this what this this like artboard that you know in factoring new it just looks like a, a plain canvas but as you increase the wear you have this marbled messy paint that starts to appear on the weapons these amazing unique designs and sure there's a plethora of them on you know. The workshop but that's a good thing that means there's more to be considered to be put in the game and i don't think that's a bad thing at all you know the workshop is a great thing and the more things that people make for the game more things that can be added more things to keep the game alive longer because we kind of this is something else too we kind of forget why we play team fortress 2 we don't play tf2 just for the hats we don't play just for the skins we don't play just for you know one specific aspect or another unless you do that i mean some people probably don't even play the game they just trade for it but we play team fortress 2 because the game is good it feels good to play it is a well-made game however much we complain about balance or how some aspect of the game is broken it really isn't in the grand scheme of things a lot, everything works so well in Team Fortress 2, and that's why we keep playing it. Not because they put more skins in it, or because they added a, a new cosmetics case, or, or or what have you, right? These are just kind of, you know, it's like salt and pepper on the already well-cooked steak. You know, it's a little bit of seasoning. It's 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 the mashed potatoes, the, 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 the vegetables on the side. Like, man, this goes really well with this, but I got this steak because I really fucking love steak. You know, that's that's what all this is. It supplements the already good game. So, it's good that there's more. I want more. I want more sides with my New York strip at the steakhouse. I want the potatoes and the macaroni and the peas and everything else. It's good, you know? And if you're a purist, if you're a purist, that's fine. You can shut all this off. You can turn it off. It's great. Um, TF2 is great. Sucks that on that Overwatch, yeah. Uh, I want to know your opinion. You think this is a good idea to add more weapons or to use war paints? So, I'm assuming what you're asking is, is it a good idea to add more unique weapons textures, like actual locked weapons collections? For instance, things like the Lightning Rod and the Shell Shocker, where that texture is just locked to that particular weapon model? Or should we just stick to the war paint system? Is that what you're asking? Just confirm that for me and I can elaborate on it a little bit more. So, you're saying... The salt is just adding seasoning on the TF2. Yeah, basically skins are the seasoning for TF2. TF2 is the already well-cooked amazing steak, and the skins are just adding some, a little more seasoning to it to give it a little more flavor. That's the idea. Uh, oh, to add more weapons to use a war paint on. I could add on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, guessing adding things like the direct hit to the war paints. Yes, okay, so, yes. Yes, I think they should. But they didn't. And the main reason why is because they made certain weapons paintable with war paints because they were underused. Things like the Back Scratcher, Claydmore, Persian Persuader, um, Bizarre Bargain, uh, Detonator, um, what else? What else? What other kind of obscure? Uh, Shahansha, um, and other, other weapons like that, you know, Panic Attack and the Brass Beast and things like that. People that, things, weapons that weren't really used much, they opted to make those war paintable, I think, I don't know this for sure, to make people want to use them more. But I think there was another issue with other weapons like the Flare Gun, the Direct Hit, the Kurtzkrieg, things like that. It's that the way that they were made 
in the game, it's that they can't apply a unique texture to them, I think is the problem. I, I don't know this for sure. Someone may want to confirm me on that, but I think that's another reason why they didn't make these more popular weapons war paintable outright. They did some, they did for a few others, you know, like the Ubersaw, they added war paints for that. The Power Jack, the Degreaser, the, um, the Tomislav, you know, uh, things like that. They added war paint variants for that, you know, just it's, it's good, it supplements it. Uh, other many guns would be problematic, I feel. You are correct about that. Again, because certain weapons models, that while they all do have unique shapes, you really do rely more on color for something like the Medigun. You can, you, it's very, it's already hard to tell a Medigun from a Kritzkrieg. You have to be fairly close to tell which is which because you're kind of looking for that distinctive, you know, all similar diameter barrel on the Kritzkrieg with the two yellow detailings on the side. It's a little harder to tell at a distance. And then if they made things like the Quick Fix and the Kurtzkrieg paintable, yeah, that would probably increase the issues with the Medi guns. So, but again, again, it would take a maximum of dying to it once to actually figure out what they're using. And then you can go from there. And of course, the Vaccinator is such a unique weapons model that if they opted to make that war paintable, that you would still be able to tell what it is. What about with the cloaks? So you mean like an invis watch? Like being able to war paint an invis watch? All the primary weapons on demo, yeah, all the, all the primary weapons on demo are war paintable and you can tell what's what because of how they're shaped. You can tell the iron bomber from stock from the lock and load from the, from the loose cannon because of how they're all shaped. That's it. Okay, so we're spending too much time on this one point. And this actually, what we're discussing right now kind of ties into the next point. And that is... Certain skins are poorly implemented on certain weapons and just seem slapped on, especially on melee weapons and the medigun. You are biased. No, German Peter, you are not biased. You are 100% correct. I agree. 90% of the war paints look like shit on the medigun and it pisses me off because there's so many amazing looking war paints that look so good on so many other weapons, but they look like ass on the medigun. Wow, I don't understand why they did that. So like, like the first wave of, you know, uh, skins to come out that had paintable, like had medigun skins, they were unique and they kind of colored them to make them look good, right? So like if you go to uh, Commando Grade, Commando Grade, so if you go to something like Corsair, that looks sick, you know? You, uh, you had, you know, the Fong shader, you had the nice color, they colored it, it looks really fucking good. That looks amazing, right? And then if you go to something like the Spark of Life right here, that looks kick-ass, it looks so good. You can tell what's, you have the wrappings as one color, but all the texture underneath this, the sparks, and it's team colored and everything, it's all well balanced and colored, it looks really, really good. But then, if you go to something like fucking, I don't know, like, uh, what's a, what's a war paint? Give me a war paint. Uh, uh, uh Carpet Bomber Mark II. You're fucking Medigun. What is that? This is black! What is that? I don't like this. It, uh, it does not apply well. It looks like shit. Uh, and, and if you go to something else, like, um, uh, Fire Glaze. Fire Glaze is, oh, this one makes me so mad because Fire Glaze looks so fucking good. You know? And you have Fire Glaze. Look at the Medigun. Oh, the fire is covered up by the wrappings on the Medigun. What makes Fire Glaze cool, which is the fire, is covered by the wrappings. What the fuck? I just, ah. Yes, you are 100% correct that a lot of war paints look like shit on the Medigun. You are not wrong. You are correct, and I'm mad about that. But some do look okay. Oh, I got a little elated. Um, so this is my current Medigun. It's Ghost Town. I think it looks really fucking cool on the Medigun. The black accents on the wrappings look really nice, and then, you know, the purple and green. It looks really cool. But there are very few cases of war paints. The unique Medigun textures pre-war paint look fairly good on the Mediguns. But a lot of the war paints as of now do not look that good. You are 100% correct. I agree with you wholeheartedly on the fact that Mediguns kind of got the short end of the stick with the war paints. And I don't see how they can fix that except for, you know, the ones that they release here on out. Maybe tweak how the textures are added. It's really just the wrappings. The wrappings look really bad with a lot of them. I don't know what they need to do. They need to do something. But yeah, Corsair Medigun looks really, really, really good. Okay, so as for melee weapons, 
Not so much. I think the worst offender is probably like uh, let's say the. I think the worst one's probably the back scratcher. This one, this one is kind of. I mean, it's a rake. It's a rake, first of all. So. Yeah, a lot of the melees look really good, Bame Time. You're right. They just look weird because, you know, they look like wrapped presents. You're kind of right. But, for instance, something like, you know, this, it, it's a fucking rake. Uh, if you do, like, it's just, it, that doesn't look bad. It's not great. In my, again, this is my subjective opinion on what looks good and what doesn't. But, I mean, if you're saying that they're just slapped on there, that's kind of the same for every other weapon. But... You know, again, subjective as to what looks good and what doesn't. Maybe three or four different weapons models are fairly incompatible with a lot of the war paints. For instance, Brass Beast has some issues with things like Fire Glazed. It does not look great. So, uh, or like, um, I don't know, spec like, like that. That is just, that's not, it looks tacky. It looks tacky. It looks like, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Some of the Halloween ones were a bit of a bust. They're pretty plain. But, um... Yeah, some, and again, some, it's not, all the war paints aren't going to look good on every skin. Some weapons models look great with every war paint, like the black box. And some weapons look like dog shit with every war paint, and that is the medigun. But it's kind of a mix and match, you know? You're going to pick the war paint that you want to put on what weapon. Yeah, so that kind of, that covers that. And then here's the next point. The wares on... The wares suck. I'm, I'm quoting what he said. The wares suck and make certain skins not just look not good, but genuinely unpleasant and worthless. Random drops of paint here and there. Rest are scratches and blood. Again, I beg to differ. I think you're wrong because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, what looks bad to one person may look good to someone else. For instance, this is a battle-scarred Neo Tokyo shotgun. To me... It looks kick-ass. Yes, a majority of the actual texture is missing. Why am I getting notifications? Another another hundred bucks. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> that's another one. But um, this is Battle Scarred. A lot of the paint is missing, but this looks cool because it looks like a beat-up Ava unit from Evangelion. It looks that's why I bought it and named it Unit Two reference. Um, and then other battle scarred skins, for instance, uh, where is my commando collections? Uh, da, 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 da. Where is my wait? Where are my stranges? Uh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Uh, battle scarred cosmic calamity looks like a comet just impacted the Earth, and I really like this one for this reason. It looks cool. Again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What looks battle scarred and worthless to one person may look cool and kick ass to another. Like me with this one. I really like battle scarred cosmic calamity. It looks cool. This blood is, you know, burnt and beat to shit. It looks like a star just slammed into earth. I like it. Subjective. Purely subjective. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, worth it doesn't mean that they're worthless or that they look worthless. You know, or that they look unpleasant. It's just, you know, what one person thinks compared to another. Right? Uh, next point that he makes. The randomization of skin rotation is poorly implemented, with certain patterns looking really stupid because they're rotated in a bad way. See, I only half agree with you here. This is only a really big problem on a couple of different textures. And the main ones that come to mind are freedom wrapped and uh, fire glazed. So if we take a look at freedom wrapped, uh, I like field tested. I feel like field tested is really annoying because it's not scarred enough to look be like relic and cool, but not clean enough to look like it's in good condition. But I agree, it's subjective. And yeah, and field tested is the most common. Someone's fucking car alarms going off. Oh my god, can you hear that? There's like three car alarms going off right now. shoot me anyway um but yeah you're right i mean field tested on a lot you know it looks fairly plain jane not so hot 
what have you. So uh, Freedom Wrapped, where was I? Freedom Wrapped has that orientation issue, I agree. So for instance, here is what Freedom Wrapped looks like on the war paint. And the orientation changes depending on the randomization factor. So here the stripes are at a slant, here slant, 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 it, you know, various slants, but you also have the chance of getting the stars and the TF logo, and depending on how you get them, like for instance, this one in particular, the stripes are now horizontal. And say we want to put that on something like the rocket launcher. Uh, it's not going to look so hot because... Oh, wait. Never mind. It looks good. <laughs> uh, what? Hold on. I see no issue here. It still looks good. Never mind. Um, what argument was I trying to make about this one? It looks okay. I forgot why. I don't know why I put that one on there. Uh, fire glazed. Uh, fire glazed is probably better. So here, the flames look like they're coming from the barrel of the gun, right? But if we randomize it, uh, now it looks like they're coming from underneath it. Or now it looks like they're coming from the top down. Or, you know, let's go to something like the black box where we can actually see the texture better. So like, see like, or like the flames are coming from the back of it. Or they're coming from the top down. So here's an example of one that has that orientation issue. But it still looks pretty good. <laughs> and then if you go to something like other ones that have this orientation uh, orientation thing. Uh, or things like uh, tiger striped and um, leopard printed. So leopard printed, here we go. Uh, probably not the best option for black box. Let's go to sticky bomb launcher. So for instance, uh, the orientation of the textures do actually change, however unnoticeable, and but so do the colors. And I think something that's really cool about the randomization of colors is that you have a lot more unique opportunities to get cool looking skins. You have some cool shit to choose from with the various, you know, colors. I think it's cool. Uh, orientation's not so much of an issue on this one, but something like tiger striped is different. Uh, there you are. Tiger, tiger buffed, rather, not tiger striped. So here, vertical, slanted, horizontal. They, they don't look bad, though. You know, the only ones that kind of look like shit are fire glazed, and I think bonk varnish doesn't look so hot, uh, given the random orientation. So bonk varnish is another one that kind of suffers from this. Uh, so for instance, like kind of like the bonk look, this is upside down. Yeah, that's an issue. That's upside down. Uh, what about the Autumn War Paint? Macaw Mast. Macaw Mast is another one that's really cool because, yes, the orientation has changed, but it's not that noticeable, and you have opportunities for different colors. That's red and blue. Now it's green and blue. Now it's just green. Now it's just green and green and blue. That was that was full blue. That's green. Again, orange. You have There's full orange. Let's see if we can get one. Full orange, there's full blue again. Full orange is the most rare on Macaw Mast. Uh, come on, baby, give me one. Uh, excuse me. Uh, well, again, full blue. You have opportunities to get things like this, and I think the randomization is cool. And a lot of them, you know, you kind of end up with a lot of not-so-good-looking skins. But, again, what's not-so-good-looking may be, you know, good for somebody else, but... I don't see an issue with the randomization factor here, aside from a couple of war paints like Bonk Varnished and Fire Glaze, where the orientation may skew how good it looks on certain weapons models. I, I do agree with you there, but uh, not 100%. A lot of them don't really suffer from this issue. So there's that was kind of the last point that German Peter made on that comment that I wanted to address, so there's that. Yeah, and these they look good. They look fucking cool. It's a bluebird. It's a fucking bluebird. It's cool. So, um, alright, so, and then he says, uh, he kind of ends his comment with, and many more hits. Elaborate. I want to know more. Like, what else, what else could you, I, I want to know what other arguments can be posed to say that skins are something that, you know, detract negatively from Team Fortress 2. I want to know what are, what sound arguments there are that can't be readily countered like I'm doing right now. Because a lot of them are subjective, and not necessarily negative, aside from the fact that they actually impact the game's performance. Right? Okay. So, uh, there are a few other comments that, um, oh wait, no, German Peter actually signed off with the PS on this one. He said, I don't think that you should be happy that the devs are even just looking in our general direction at this point. Because considering how much money the players invested, not an investment, I think they deserve much better treatment. Valve only cares about money, and we give them money, so why not treat us better? 
we should be grateful. TF2 is 11 years old. It is well past its prime. Valve has dedicated employees whose heart and souls love this game, and they're working on it for us because they're passionate about Team Fortress 2. We should be grateful every day that they even consider working on this game because it's their choice. That's how Valve works. They allow people to pick on what they want to work on. And the fact that they even want to bother with the hot fucking mess of code that is TF2 is a blessing for people like you and I who are very passionate about this game and for everyone else watching right now. You know, we need to be grateful. We need to like, we, we shouldn't be, you know, kissing their feet and, you know, you know, you know, hugging the ground that they walk on, or rather kissing the ground that they walk on, but we should be incredibly thankful that they even care after this game has been around for 11 years. We need to just remember, remind ourselves that the dev team is small. It's a comprised of a small, dedicated set of individuals that are passionate about this game as much as a lot of other people are, like myself and others. And Valve does care about making profit as a business. Yes. And it was harsh of me to say that they do only care about money. I was wrong. They do actually care about their customers as well. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep putting out high-quality products like this. You know, they obviously care about us and they, we know that they listen. We know that they listen to us. We know that they listen to our feedback. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of having the blog? They don't really tell us what they're working on, but they do listen to everything that we say. That has been shown. They have told us before that they actually pay attention to everything that we're saying. So there's that. We should be very grateful that they even care. And TF2 updates and other things are very flawed in the game with bugs and, you know, other reasons. And the main reason for that is because the dev team is, you know, it's been continuously evolving more so over the past, you know, six years or so in terms of its composition and size, you know, and just how the age of the game, how tricky it is to work with, and how one new line of code can cause ten other things to break. It's just how the game is structured. And again, we need to be grateful because they... You know, they're even wanna just, they even want to they don't want to touch this hot fucking mess, right? It's like, ah, we're going to step into the fucking hive of bees and work on TF2. It's the fucking hive of bees, but the honey tastes so good, so we're going to work on it, right? So, they treat us fairly well. They treat us really well. Saying that they don't treat us well or saying that they should treat us better is a farce because they treat us really well. And they have been for a long time. They treat us so well because they keep giving us content. They keep giving us updates, you know? They, they post on the blog, you know? Sure, another update with, you know, prize medals is, you know, a little disheartening. You know, it's like, oh, great, more medals in the game. But that shows that they're still working on it, right? They care. And they treat us really well for a fairly microscopic development team on a game that's over 10 years old. They just, the only critique I have for the dev team is that they just need to focus on communicating with us better. You know, they need to at least, you know, use the blog once a month and kind of remind us, hey, we're here, we're working on this, or, you know, maybe not even explicitly saying what they're working on, because again, Valve is a very quiet company in terms of what they're working on. They don't always, you know, disclose what they're working on, but at least remind us that you're there. That would be good. A lot of other people have made this argument as well. Tell us you're alive. <laughs> Aside from, you know, doing a localization files update or a, or a pushing out a metal update or something, you know? Remind us that you're there. And that you're working for us. Right? You know? We should be grateful. I'm grateful that you guys, they're not listening. That the dev team is playing, you know, with this game anymore. That they're even bothering to work on it. Because I'm very passionate about Team Fortress 2. I have been for a long time. I've played this game for, you know, nearly every day for, uh, for, for years now. And um, I've put a lot of time, I've put a lot of money, a lot of effort and heart and soul into it. And to say that the devs should treat us better, I don't know. It kind of feels like you called my mom the bad name. That's the only kind of emotion I can compare it to, you know? 
it feels like you just insulted someone that I that I like look up to. It's odd. Even though we may not like everything they do, they still do a lot of work for us. I don't know. I it, perhaps it's not the the greatest analogy, but that's kind of how I feel how I felt when you said that. You may have not I I know German Peter didn't mean to say it like that or you know imply that sort of negativity behind it, but the dev team treats us as well as they can. They're limited. It's a small team. It's a limited number of people. They're doing the best they can with what they got, right? You can't be expected to build a skyscraper in a week and have it be top quality, top notch when you're given a work team of three with a hammer and chisel and a pile of bricks. They're working with what they got, and I think they're doing a stand-up job. So, that's what I think on that. So, the whole argument that skins are not a quality product for Team Fortress 2, that they're not something beneficial, is just wrong. Anyone who says skins are inherently negative to the game and that they detract from the quality of the game are just wrong. It's a subjective opinion that they have. It is an overall positive addition to Team Fortress 2, and I think they're great as a subjective opinion. I like collecting them, I like playing with them, I like talking about them, I like analyzing them. To me, they're like trading cards. I like collecting them and talking about them and swapping them. It's like, oh, this one's cool, whatever. And a vast majority of people also like them and want to use them. And again, to say that they're, that, you know, that they're just negative is wrong. And just because a few popular Team Fortress 2 YouTubers say that something is wrong or something is broken or something is bad for the game it doesn't mean that they're right it doesn't mean that i'm right either if someone says that something is good in tf2 or inherently good it doesn't mean that they're right either unless they're able to back it up with facts kind of like what i've done here in the fact that skins are a good addition for the fact that they keep the game alive because they're earning Valve money. Everything else is subjective beyond that. Fair? I think that's a fair argument. And that's kind of where I'm going to end it off on the, the German Peter thing. German Peter's arguments in his video? Very sound. You know? And they all made sense. You know? And I agree with some of them, like I just went through. But skins don't suck. They're not inherently bad. And how they look is subjective okay and the virtual economist's video pisses me off i hate it i hate his arguments they're all brutally flawed you're just wrong okay so um <laughs> i want to kind of end off on a on a fairly funny uh rant paragraph that someone put on the video uh i bless his heart but let's go. First thing he says, skins negatively affect performance. Yes. They mess up one of the core gameplay aspects to TF2, which is readability. You're wrong. I already went over that. It's how uh, things are shaped in the game. The game does not rely solely on color. The company needs to make money selling a bad product is not... V okay, this, this, is a, this is an interesting comment. He says... The company needs to make money selling a bad product is not a valid argument because what if a candy company wants to sell poison? That's a red herring and completely irrelevant. The fact that it's a bad product is your opinion. It's like saying that Hershey's dark chocolate sucks and that Hershey's should not sell their dark chocolate because you only like their milk chocolate instead, even though lots of other people love their dark chocolate. Right. That's, what you, that's the argument you're actually trying to make. You know, it's not like it's killing the game. Skins are not poison, they're an addition, they're a variety, they're a spice. You can choose to not have it, and it doesn't hurt the game or kill it in any way. So I don't know why you would even consider them something like poison. Whatever. <clears throat> then he says, They do break art style. Heavy wouldn't use a Bonk minigun or a USA flag minigun. I went over art style stuff already, we have our deviations, but we have the choice with war paints. Yes, the Russian heavy carrying an American flag minigun is ironic because 
a Russian wouldn't be carrying an American flag minigun, but I think that's funny. A Russian killing Americans with their own flag is kind of a gag in and of itself. You can make a joke out of that. So kind of seeing something that would, you know, that shouldn't work is also kind of subjective, so. Your comment doesn't count because you have an anime profile picture. Ah, uh, yeah, anything I say is completely negated because I like cartoons, unfortunately. So, uh, we, you can just stop watching the stream now. Everything I've said is incorrect. Because anime. Anyway. Uh. While, uh, a lot of skins pre like, previous to the Warpaint era did have the problem where they were locked to a specific weapon model. Um. They weren't game-breaking. Quote-unquote. You know, they didn't really break the art style. A lot of the original collections of weapons didn't have this issue aside from the weapons like the pink elephant, the shell shocker, the lightning rod, or lightning bolt rather. Rod, bolt, bolt, lightning bolt. The sniper rifle, the elite grade with the thunderbolts. Even then it didn't deviate, deviate that sharply. At least the yellow one didn't. The, the pink and the green, yeah, I can see that, but not so much. Uh, then he says, I'm getting hoarse, then he says... To be fair, on that point, it doesn't break it nearly as bad as some of the cosmetics that were added. Deadbeats, banana, cats, and so on. I think they should be more mindful of what they add as skins, and it's getting pretty bad. I do agree with you here. Other people like Funk have made this argument that, you know, all of these items are killing the game's original art style. Some people might find that bad, and I agree. I don't think someone who's living in the 1960s should be wearing a pair of headphones like these. That does break the game's art style. But people are buying them. People are spending money on them. It doesn't mean that they are inherently correct and that they're fine with the art style. But no harm, no foul. Again, subjective. If you want to be a purist and maintain the art style you have ways of going about turning off cosmetics. But, earns Valve money. I can't really, you know, give another argument for the fact that, you know, it gives them money, keeps the game alive. It's something that people want to spend money on, so. And someone made those. That's someone's hard work. Someone designed the dead beats and they got added to the game, so. Yeah. Community item. Uh, next. Uh, you are right though, skins don't suck, but you are right for dumb reasons. I am supersized. You never brought up unusual weapons, which would have been a strong point if brought up. Note, he wrote supersized. Um, how? Uh, unusuals have been around longer than skins, and unusual weapons kind of fall under that same category. They're gaudy for a different reason, and people want to buy them for the fact that they're, you know, catchy and eye-grabby. So... I don't really see that argument there. Next, uh, your primary argument is that skins make Valve money, so even if they are a bad product, which they're not, you should get over it because without money you wouldn't have a game to play. Yes. Yes, exactly. No shit. If the game... <laughs> like, you tried to make that some kind of, like, you know, counter-argument to my main argument, but the fact that these things give Valve money is what makes TF2 remain an economic and profitable product, which means that they're still going to dedicate dev support to it. Duh. <laughs> of course it means that gonna, it's going to earn them money. And without money, then we're not going to have a game to play. No shit. What do you think happens to games like Halo 2, Halo 3? Inherently good games, other variants, that just dropped off the face of the earth. They, no one was spending money on them anymore. No one was buying old copies of Halo 2 because there were other products like Halo 3 and everything else that came out afterwards. You know? It still earns Valve money. It's a long-lived IP. So yes, they're going to put things in the game that people want to spend money on so it can keep earning them money. That's why they were added. So. Duh. And then the last point uh, someone someone asked me, uh, did Valve pay you to write an eight minute rant where you yell at the viewer to buy skins or TF2 will die? Uh, I wasn't paid. I wish I was, but yes. Um, and then someone else says, okay, I hate anime, but I like your channel. I'm glad someone else doesn't think trading skins is hard. It's just in a league of its own. Its own set of rules doesn't mean it's bad. It's just different, like competitive Team Fortress 2. Yes. The skin market is there. It's out. It's you know. It's kind of on its own separate stream flow. It's on its own channel. It exists. It's there. I'm involved. It's there. 
you just have to learn the trick of the trade with skins. And I know how it works. It's a different market and unusual traders and, and traders in general don't want to dive in because it's having to learn new concepts that they can't just sick their bots on to, you know, do the endless undercutting war with unusuals. You can't really set up trade bots for skins and that's what's killing Team Fortress 2. But that's an entirely different can of worms that I'm more than willing to get into, but I won't because I'm getting tired. Oh, Christ almighty.